If you are ambitious about becoming a data scientist, but sometimes feel like lazy or unmotivated, and because of that, you think you are unable to make any progress, this video is for you. I'm making this video because I get this exact feedback from a lot of aspiring data scientists and students that they really want to become a data scientist, but at times they feel lazy, unmotivated, and that hinders the progress they wanted to make. And on this topic, I have a little different perspective, which I wanted to share in this video. Because a lot of people, when they say they are lazy or unmotivated, they are sort of blaming it on themselves, on their personality. And I think laziness or unmotivation is not a function of personality. Instead, it relies on some other things which I'm going to explain in this video. And the good thing about this perspective is that once you know what are the factors which are making you lazy and unmotivated and you have identified them, then you can work towards the solution of rectifying them. Now, to give you a very easy to understand example, let's say even if you are the laziest person in the world, and if I tell you that if you go into another room in the same building or house you're living in, you just have to go to the other room in the same building. And there, when you open the door, you will find $10,000 lying there and you can take all of them. Now, if you have some trust in what I'm saying, I'm pretty sure that even the laziest person in the world would act on that advice. They would go to the other room in the building, they would open the door and they'll get the $10,000. Even if I say this to a million people, all million people would act on that advice regardless of their laziness and regardless of their lack of motivation. But on the other hand, if I tell you, let's say if you are living in New York and I tell you, if you go to California all the way on bicycle, there is about 50% chance that you'll get the same $10,000. Now, a vast majority of you, pretty much all of the people I will tell you, will never act on that advice. Why? Because going from New York to California, it's about 3,000 miles distance, Traveling it on bicycle would take weeks, if not months. And then there's a 50-50 chance that you'll get the money. So pretty much no one will work on that kind of proposal. Now I have given you two contrasting scenarios. One where you just have to walk to another room in the same building for sure you'll get $10,000. Everyone would act on that, regardless of their laziness. And in the other scenario, you have to go on bicycle from New York to California, and then there's a 50-50 chance that you'll get the money. No one will act on that advice. So then it really is not the matter of motivation or laziness. Instead, it depends on some other factors, which I'm going to explain right now. I believe that your motivation level, it depends on four things. The very first thing it depends on is the perceived value of the thing you wanted to pursue. So in this case, when I say, if you go to the other room in the same building and you'll get $10,000, pretty much everyone would jump out of the couch or jump out of the bed and will go and act on that advice. But what if I have told you that if, if you go into the other room of the same building and instead of $10,000, you'll get just one cent. I'm pretty sure most of you do not think that going to another room and finding that one cent is really worth their time. So in that case, most people will not act on that advice. So the first factor which derives this motivation level is how much you perceive the value of the thing which you are pursuing. So that is definitely the first thing. The second thing which impacts the motivation is what is the probability of you getting that thing if you act on that advice. Again, going back to that example of going into the next room to get the $10,000, let's say if the person who is giving you that promise, you have zero trust in them, or very minimal trust in them, you know they are habitual liar. And if that person tells you that you go to the next room and there is $10,000 waiting for you, you can just go there and get it, there is a very good chance that you will not act on that advice because the probability of that promise is very low. So this is the second thing on which your motivation or the probability of you acting 
really depends. If you are in the data science job market, then you already know that the job market is pretty tough right now. The good news is that I'm starting an absolutely free of cost coaching and mastermind program where I'll be providing personalized coaching to selected five people. Since this is the first time I'm starting such cohort, so I've intentionally kept it free and I've intentionally kept it very small so that I could work with only people where I have a good confidence that I can help them get their first data science job. And for this first cohort, I'll just be selecting five people. So if you are really enthusiastic about landing your first data science job and you are willing to put in the work and effort which I would ask you to, then please fill in the application form which is in the description below. For now, I'm just opening it up to the candidates who are in the US since most of my experience is based off the US and these are the candidates I think I can help the most. So if you are a serious data science candidate based of US, please fill out the application form below. I promise I'll just pick the candidates where I think I have a very good confidence that I can help you land your first data science job. And as I said, the program is absolutely free of cost. All I'm looking for is commitment from your side. And at my side, I'll do the due diligence to make sure that you have maximum chances of benefiting from what I have to offer. The link for the application form is in the description. Please fill it out. Now let's look at what is the third thing. I'm putting the third thing into the denominator because it inversely impacts, because as the value of this thing goes up, it inversely impacts your motivation. And this is the time to get what you are being promised. Again, tying it to the same example of going into the next room to get $10,000. If I tell you that if you go into the next room, 80 years later, you will get the $10,000. Now, a lot of people would think, after 80 years, I'm not sure if I will even be alive. And after 80 years, what would be the value of the $10,000, which would be drastically different from what it currently is. And because of all that mental calculation, it decreases the value in our mind of the thing which we are trying to get. And this significantly reduces our motivation level. And that is why a lot of people, even when knowing that every dollar which they put into the retirement account would be tenfold or twentyfold when they retire, do not invest into the retirement accounts because whatever you have to invest is like 20, 30, 40 years down the line that you'll get the reward of it. And that gap of years really drives down the motivation for the people to invest the money into the retirement accounts. Now let's quickly look at what is the fourth and the last thing which impacts the motivation. And that is the effort which you have to put in to get the result which you're trying to get. Now this is very obvious because anything which is hard, for instance, the example which I gave in the beginning, that if you have to go on bicycle from New York all the way to California to get the $10,000, very few people would be willing to do it because it's just so much effort. And that's it, these are the four things. It does not depend on your personality. It is a function of these four things and that's it. And if you look closely, it is very similar to the value equation which Alex Hermosi talks a lot about in most of his videos and books. The context there is in the business setting, but I think this applies to everything which you're trying to accomplish. Because any time where motivation is needed to act on some goal, these are the four things which would determine how much motivated you would be to take action on that goal. So now as we have explored all the four things which impact your motivation level, let's look at them one by one and see what you can do practically to improve your motivation, to work on your data science curriculum, your portfolio project, so that you can actually get your first data science job. So first let's look at the perceived value of the thing you're trying to achieve, which in this case is landing your first data science job. And let's try to analyze what increases the perceived value of this data science job which you're trying to pursue in your mind. And let me share a personal example of how having a concrete value of something in my mind really changed my perspective. Since I started my first job in the US, I really wanted to apply and get a job in any fan companies like Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, etc. And I would start the interview preparation process every once in a while and then I would feel unmotivated and life comes in a way. But then someone pointed me to an app blind and I started spending some time on the blind app and in this app people are mostly 
talking about getting FANG offers, preparing for FANG, and all that FANG-related discussion. These are people mostly in the US, mostly in the tech, and wanted to get in the FANG companies. And one thing I quickly realized there is that people were getting feedback on the offers which they were getting from the FANG companies. Now, I previously had a very good idea that FANG companies pay very well, but I had not seen concretely so many examples of this person getting this much offer and then this person and this person and this person. Pretty much every day, I would see two, three or more people sharing the recent offers which they have got from fan companies. And I could see that these companies pay really well. And by just exposing myself to that environment where people were sharing their success stories, and I could see that if I were to pursue it, this is really valuable because the perks, privileges, and the money you get when you work at fan companies is really well. And you can do the same thing if you want to get your first data science job. I know you already would have a good idea that AI is the future and companies are paying a lot of money to hire AI talent, including data science and machine learning roles. But if you go on websites like levels.fyi, the blind app which I mentioned, even on lead code, you would see that a lot of people are sharing the offers which they have got. And if you look at the offers specifically for data scientists and machine learning engineers, and you keep doing it for a week or two, that would give you a very good sense that companies are actually paying a lot of money to hire that kind of talent. And that increases at a visceral level your perceived value of the data science roles which you are so determined to get. So this is one way to further increase the perceived value of the goal which you're trying to get, which is your first data science job. Now let's look at how you can increase the probability, the perceived probability that you can actually accomplish this goal. Now this is probably the most tricky thing among all the four factors which I'm discussing here. And again, I think the thing which would be most impactful or useful for you to increase the perceived probability is to surround yourself with people who are going towards the same goal. Because when you are part of a cohort, which is going towards the same goal, in this case, landing your first data science job, you would see that some of those people would actually land their jobs. And as you have spent some time with them, and when they achieve their goal, that will give you some confidence that if they can do it, you can do it too. And it's not some vague thing which someone has told you or you are vaguely thinking about. Again, going back to a personal example, I wanted to compete in a civil services exam in Pakistan. It is one of the toughest exam in the country. Pass rate is less than 1%. And when I used to tell people that this is what I wanted to do, everyone said that that's a bad idea because the probability of you actually being able to secure a job through that is very, very, very low. And one thing which really helped me do it is that even before I had to sit an exam, two, three years before, I started attending an academy which was helping prepare for that exam. And when I was sitting there, though I did not have to give the exam that year, I developed some relationship with the people who were preparing. And then later, when I realized that some of those people got really good jobs and I could really compare their competence level against mine, that gave me just so much confidence that if they can do it, I can do it too. Alex Hormozzi also talks about that even when he did not have a lot of money, he came across Russell Brunson mastermind, the cost to get into that was $25,000. And Alex Hermosi did not had a lot of money back then. But still, he paid that $25,000. And he said in that mastermind, he did not learn anything new. Everything which was said and shared there is freely available on the internet. You can just Google it or search it on YouTube. But the benefit of enrolling in that mastermind was that there were a lot of other people who were making tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. And when you spend time with those people, you realize that if they can do it, there is no way that he cannot do it. That if they can do it, you can do it too. In Alex Hermos's words, that confidence was very well worth that $25,000 he has spent in, into it. So how does all of that apply 
towards getting your job as a data scientist. Try to see if you could enroll in some sort of a cohort where data science training is being done so that you could have some peers who are going towards the same goal and when some of them will get their first data science job, that will give you immense confidence that if they can do it, you can do it too. Now let's look at the third factor, which is the time to get it. I think as you spend more time trying to see that what is the syllabus you have to cover before you start applying for data science roles and start clearing the interviews, you would realize that it should not take you more than six to nine months to prepare to at least land your first data science job. I have covered this in detail in a lot of videos, especially the one, I'll put the link in the description, but that video is 40 minutes long in which I have looked at the actual about eight to 10 job descriptions on LinkedIn for data science roles. It's a breakdown and I have broken down what are the things they are asking for, how you can prepare for them, what should be the order of preparation from where you can prepare it. All of that is in that 40 minute long video. I'll put the link in the description, but you'll find a lot of material on how you can prepare for data science roles. You really have to spend some time trying to fully see that what are all the things you have to cover. And when you look at it from that perspective, you would realize that if you put in some good work in six to nine months, you should be job ready. And I think you should really do this exercise of trying to see what are the things you have to cover and then trying to get some estimate of how much time it will take you to cover that. And the longer that time and the lower your motivation level would be. So if you could squeeze it down to three months, six months, that will really help you with the motivation level. Now, lastly, coming to the fourth thing, which is how much effort is needed to get that first data science role. The first thing I would say is that it's not easy. Uh, I'm not here to stay, say that you can just go through a 20 hour course just look at it at 2x speed and you'll be able to land your data science job in no time. It'll take you a lot of work. Even if you spend like three to four hours, it'll take you six months, nine months, maybe a year to be fully prepared to start clearing the data science interviews. The market is pretty tough, so you really have to prepare hard. With that said, even if you have to spend three hours every day and it takes you one full year to be prepared for the data science rules. That is about 1000 hours. And by investing that 1000 hours, if you are able to get a job which pays you more than $100,000 in the US, that's pretty doable. So that by investing $1000, you're getting $100,000 back. So you are basically selling every hour at $100 per hour which is a pretty good deal if you think about it. So though you have to put in a lot of effort, the amount of return you are getting out of it, it is just astronomical. It makes that deal a no brainer. So just to quickly wrap up the video, if you think you are not able to make some good progress while learning data science, and that is because the kind of person you are, or if you are lazy, it is not, you have to trust that it is not who you are, which is causing it, it is your worldview and your information and perceived value of some things. And I have broken down this video, it depends on four things, for in, to increase the perceived value of the data science, try to spend some time on different websites like Blind, LeetCode, Levels.fyi, etc., and see that what is the actual amount of money data scientists are making. Now to increase, coming to the second thing, which is the perceived likelihood or probability of the things you're trying to get. Again, try to enroll in some sort of cohort learning. Try to get into ideally an in-class, in-person kind of a classroom environment where you are not the only person who is doing the same thing. There are other people who are doing it. And once you are able to form some sort of relationship and friendship with those people, and you see those people succeeding in what you wanted to do, that will significantly increase your motivation level and your belief that if they can do it, then you can do it too. And the last two things are, know that it shouldn't take you more than 12 months, three hours a day should be able to get you to a stage that you're able to clear the interviews. What are the things you have to cover? I've explained that in detail in this video. It's a 40 minute long video where I've covered all the things you need to know to start the preparation. I hope you find this video useful. Thank you so much for watching.